Welcome to Chat and Dish. I'm Casey Quaretti and it's already September. That means we've got a long holiday season ahead of us and I love dishes that let you spend your time with your guests. So today I'm going to show you how to make a stuffed pork tenderloin that's absolutely perfect for all kinds of entertaining. Our stuffing starts off with one chopped onion. Add your onions to two tablespoons of hot olive oil, saute them until they are translucent. Our onions are all soft and translucent. Now we add one package of baby spinach, a sprinkling of salt, cover and cook down until the spinach is softened. Our spinach is all soft, it's gotten to know our onions. Now we're going to set it aside, let them drain a bit. Now for prepping our pork tenderloin, I want you to start off by making a small slit lengthwise down your pork tenderloin. You want your slit to be about a quarter of an inch deep. Continue making small cuts down the length of your pork tenderloin. What you're actually doing is unrolling it. Cover your pork tenderloin with a piece of parchment paper. Then what you're going to do is give it a few whacks with a cooking mallet. You're not trying to make it thin. What you're doing is making sure that any of the little cuts that you did are all exactly even. You want your pork tenderloin the same thickness throughout for the cooking process. Our tenderloin is ready to be stuffed with Swiss cheese. Now our spinach is all drained and make sure that you give it a little smush with a spoon to make sure that all of the spinach liquid is out of it. Otherwise it's going to get too soft and runny. On top of our spinach we are going to put sliced prosciutto. Yum. Now, if you don't have prosciutto at your local market, you can always substitute ham. We're talking pork on pork here. Now it's easy. We simply roll this up. When you roll this, you're actually reconstructing your tenderloin. Now it's your choice. You can either roll it in parchment paper, which is what I like to do, or tie it with kitchen string and it's ready for the oven. Now it's into a 425 degree oven that you have preheated. On this one I want you to use a meat thermometer. It needs to reach 160 in the internal temperature, then pull it out. The reason that I'm having you use a meat thermometer today is because every pork tenderloin weighs a little bit different and with the stuffing inside you cannot really rely on time. So instant meat thermometer, they're very inexpensive, make sure you use one. I like to serve the pork tenderloin with a side of apples and pineapple and brown butter. Melt two tablespoons of butter over medium heat until lightly browned. Then simply add your apples and pineapple, then back to the stove until they're warmed through. While you're warming your apples and pineapple together, you can even add a little bit of cinnamon if you like. You know they release their juices as they're warmed through, then all you have to do is pack them into a little muffin tin like this for a perfectly beautiful restaurant quality side dish. Oh, I love doing this. It always looks so nice on the plate. You know, you can even get this ready a little ahead of time. Hold on, watch this. Lift that up and there you go. Oh, make sure you let your tenderloin rest for 10 minutes before slicing. Now it's time to plate up. We've got our two slices and I'm going to drizzle a little tiny bit of our cooking juices that I've reduced with two tablespoons of butter and a just about, oh, a tablespoon or two of red wine. Just a little drizzle around your plate and you've got something that looks like it came from a restaurant. Our stuffed pork tenderloin is always a welcome addition to any holiday buffet table and something else it goes great with, a nice Bordeaux. Okay, first shout out today goes to Leslie over at Sapadilla Brown. She shows us how to make roasted Brussels sprouts that are so good, I guarantee your kids are going to love them. Make sure you stop and visit this newer blog, Sapadilla Brown, and say hi to Leslie. And check out those Brussels sprouts. Okay, over at A Little Bit Crunchy and A Little Bit Rock and Roll, we have a dish that is going to make your family so happy come Saturday or Sunday morning. Cinnamon roll pancakes. They are absolutely amazing and what an incredible treat. A little bit crunchy, a little bit rock and roll cinnamon roll pancakes. Don't miss out. As always, thank you for visiting. Until next time, I'm going to miss you.